extensile surgical approach for the resection of large tumors of the axilla and brachial plexus. These illustrations exhibit the key steps of the extensile surgical approach. The patient is placed in a supine semilateral position. The arm, shoulder girdle, and chest are prepped and draped. The incision extends along the deltopectoral interval curves inferiorly and distally over the base of the axilla. The pectoralis major muscle is identified and the fascia overlying the inferior border is opened. This permits access to the deep surface of the muscle and isolation from the underlying structures and adjacent deltoid muscle. The fascia overlying the axillary space in the interval between the short head of the biceps and pectoralis minor muscles is carefully open. This permits access to the musculocutaneous nerve, brachial plexus, and axillary vessels. The pectoralis minor and conjoined tendon form the anterior muscle layer within the axillary space. The release of these muscles is key for complete extensile exposure of the vascular sheath, the brachial plexus, and the numerous vascular branches feeding any large tumors. Conjoined tendon is released from the coracoid process and reflected caudally. Muscutaneous nerve is isolated and protected to help prevent any possible traction injury that can occur during reflection of the conjoined tendon. The conjoined tendon is further reflected caudally. The pectoralis minor is also released from the coracoid process and reflected medially. All edges of reflected muscles are tagged with suture for later identification and use in reconstruction. Following release and reflection of all of the pertinent muscles, exposure of the brachial plexus and axillary vessels is possible. Proximal and distal control of the vascular sheath is obtained prior to tumor dissection. Each of the major nerves of the brachial plexus is identified, isolated, and dissected from the tumor. Vessel loops are placed around each. The anterior and posterior humeral circumflex vessels are isolated and tied off. This permits complete mobilization of the vascular structures away from the tumor. The axillary vessels and median nerve are isolated and protected. With all the major vessels and nerve cords protected, complete exposure of the tumor is possible.
It is determined that the tumor is arising from the posterior cord and radial nerve. A longitudinal incision is made along the anterior aspect of the radial nerve sheath. This is a protective method for helping to prevent possible transection of the radial nerve fascicles which are located on the posterior aspect of the radial nerve sheath. Once the sheath is opened, an end block resection of the tumor is possible. Following end block resection, the fascicles of the radial nerve remain intact. The remaining sheath tissue will be left in place and will be absorbed over time. The final tumor specimen. Following the end block resection of tumor, it is vital to have anatomic restoration of all reflected muscles for patient outcome. first muscle reattached is the pectoralis minor. It is reattached to the coracoid process using a non-absorbable suture. In this case, a number 5 ethabond was used. The conjoined tendon is also reattached to the coracoid process using the same non-absorbable suture. The pectoralis major is reattached to its insertion site on the proximal humerus in the same manner. It is important to use the Mason Allen stitch or modification of it for the reattachment. It is a locking suture that minimizes muscle necrosis. Following resection, if there is a large empty dead space that is prone to collect fluid, it can be filled with the latissimus dorsi muscle. The latissimus can be released from its humeral insertion and rotated into the defect suturing it to the subscapularis muscle. In this case, the dead space was small and this was not necessary. Pectoralis major is also reattached to the deltoid. Two ovicral and three monocral were used to close the skin. The incision was sealed with dermabond and covered with sterile bandages.